first step to making an outline is making sure that you have exactly the assignment um, description in front of you and you know exactly what your instructor is going to expect you to turn in. So for this example, we're looking at the um, AP English Language and Composition assignment, but other assignments uh, might have slightly different expectations from your instructor. So again, be sure to review the exact assignment to make sure that you're going to turn in everything that's required. And then in Noodle Tools, go to your uh, Note Cards view, and then you will need to select the Outline option. So the outline option is always automatically turned off, um, but up in the top, if you're in the tabletop view, up in the top in the middle, there is a button that says outline. So as soon as you check that button, the outline screen will show up. If you close Noodle Tools and come back, this will be hidden again, and you have to remember to go and click it to open it. So we have an example, topic and subtopic, and you can always click on either one of these and hit the edit field and change the name. So looking at the instructions that I've been given for this particular assignment, my teacher wants uh, my first paragraph to be an introduction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it introduction. And um, let me lay out the first step of the outlining, which are all the main topics that use the Roman numerals and then we'll come back and do subtopics later. So I can add an, another new topic, and actually I can add several new topics, and then just go back in and edit them. So again, each topic should be roughly a paragraph in your final paper, although it does not have to be exactly, and you can always modify it later. So it's, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, looking at my AP English Language and Composition instructions, I know that uh, my introduction will be followed by a narration. After that, uh, my concession. And then I am required to have a minimum of two confirmations, and those have to be different paragraphs. Uh, it, it is possible to do more for that particular paper. And then um, the end is, of course, my conclusion. So again, depending on your specific assignment, review the description and make sure that you name these paragraphs whatever is going to be expected by your instructor. Then I can start looking at my subtopics. So once I click on one of my main topics, anything that I add will be added as a subtopic to that. So um, for example, again, in my English language and composition, I know that I'm required to start the paper with an anecdote. So I might just go ahead and put that in there to remind myself. Oh, I think I've spelled it wrong. Anecdote, there we go. Um, and um, what else I might need to add to that, perhaps some context to explain um, if I use a direct quote in my anecdote. In the narration for this particular paper, I'm gonna add some subtopics because um, I most likely am going to add some statistics the narration is the part of the paper where you explain the scope of the problem, why it's serious and why it needs to be addressed. And then the very end of the narration must be your thesis. So I know that from my assignment description, I'm gonna go ahead and add those subtopics. Again, if your assignment is different. You might call your subtopics something else. And you also might want to make them more specific. I'm using very general language here. But um, for example, my, in, in this particular paper, my concession paragraph must have my two counter arguments. Uh, and again, this is not arguing against the counter arguments at this point, it is simply introducing them. So I know I have to have those. Um, it's quite possible in some papers, those might take two paragraphs, but the general structure is laid out for that to take one paragraph because you're not arguing against them yet. And then I know that I'll have my two confirmation paragraphs. And again, if you want to use more specific language, so for example, if I'm writing a paper on animal captivity, and one of the points I'm trying to prove is that orcas are too big to live in confinement, I might want to actually say that specifically. And then maybe I will add a subtopic because I know I have a certain, oops, that just got put in the wrong place. Hold on. I'm going to drag that up and try and drop it there. So I've just added, added it to as a subtopic. 
Um, so I know I have a study maybe. Um, so I, this is where I could remind myself to introduce the study that I've already gotten. And then uh, last but not least, we know that the conclusion um, for the AP Lane Comp paper must include a call to action. Um, so I know that that's going to be there. The reason we're doing this before we start dragging and dropping the note cards is the note cards have to be put somewhere. They have to be dragged into basically a bucket that has to be ready to catch them. So um, this might be a good time for you to get out that outline, think about your paper, pause this video, make this outline with as much detail as you can of where everything's going to go. And then after you've got your outline ready, come back, restart this video, and I'll demonstrate how to uh, move the note cards over and finally do the export. Uh, so right now, we are going to move some note cards into my outline. I'm done with all of my topics, subtopics. So the first thing to do to drag note cards over is you have to actually highlight where in the outline you want it to go. So I'm going to go and click on where I know this, this is going to go, and then I'm going to grab the note card that I want to move, and I'm going to hover it over. Now this phase can sometimes be a little fussy because it requires the Wi-Fi to be working. So if you try to do this and it doesn't seem to take the first time, kind of try it again, make sure that your Wi-Fi is working all right, but this is where you're going to actually drag and drop it live. So let's see if my Wi-Fi is working, there it goes. So this is what it'll look like when it takes, is you'll see the square that the note card has dropped over. You'll also see a little check mark will appear in your note card after it has successfully been dragged over. So you can keep track of a note card that you have dragged and dropped. Um, you can drag a note card into more than one place, but again, hopefully your note cards are fairly small so that there is not a lot of stuff to drag over. And you can drag multiple note cards over into any one subtopic, that's fine too. Um, so again, I would maybe pause this video take a few minutes, drag all the note cards to where they want to be, and then come back and we'll do the final step, which is exporting them. All right, so you've got all your note cards dragged over and you're ready to export. You will click this printer button up at the top and then the very bottom choice, which says outline with note cards. That's very important to select that outline with note cards. Uh, personally, I'm going to do a Google Doc right now so I don't have to save it. Um, your teacher might prefer a Word document, so maybe sort of pay attention to that. And right now, I'm just going to export everything, and then it's very easy to just delete it later when I'm working with my outline. So I'm going to go ahead and export my outline with note cards. And um, in the Google Doc, the process of getting this sort of cleaned up and ready to turn in is just deleting some unnecessary text and moving some things around. So the part that definitely needs to stay and go into my final product is the structure of the outline. So all of the Roman numeral topics, all of the subtopics, those all need to stay. That is a sort of traditional outline. But some of the stuff that uh, exported from my note cards, like the title of the note card, it might be useful for me to have while I'm moving things around because maybe I made a note to myself like this is my anecdote so I might want to keep that in there but before I turn in my outline I, I need to go ahead and delete that that's just basically a note to myself um, same thing if you use tags or any other kind of buttons or anything in the note cards you could delete most of that once you've checked it and made sure you don't have to do anything with it and so then I'm left with my direct quote. What's great about this uh, exporting process is I don't have to retype anything that was in my note cards because it's just been all exported. But what I should do, since I've got my source information right here, in order to really get this ready to go into my final paper eventually, I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of where every direct quotation came from. I'm not getting confused between a direct quote and a paraphrase because that could lead to accidental plagiarism. And I'm getting ahead of some of my work and actually going ahead and structuring my parenthetical citations correctly. So for example, if my source is a book and the author of the book is Moss, then I know that my parenthetical is going to have that author's last name, Moss, with a space, and then the page number. I know from my note right here, it was page 164. So a properly formatted MLA parenthetical does not have the word page, it just has a number. 
And in MLA format, the period goes after that. So I'm going to go back and just take the period out of here. And then I can now get rid of all of this stuff. And all I have at this place in my outline is the quote. Um, I would recommend that you go through and do that cleaning up process for basically everything that got exported over. So for example, I exported a bunch of um, you know, details and facts from this particular note card. Now that I'm looking at where it falls in my outline, I might make some decisions of stuff that isn't actually interesting. So I think, and actually in my final paper, I don't want to use that. I, I don't want to use that. That's not really interesting. I might just want to say um, when this was created and who by. So maybe I'll just leave these facts in there. And again, to get them ready uh, to be parenthetical citations, because remember, even if they're not direct quotations, there still has to be a parenthetical citation there. I'm going to go ahead and get them in proper format. Um, if you can't remember how a certain type of parenthetical should be cited, just to remind you, there's some help in Noodle Tools. All right, so I'm going to delete the My Ideas now that I'm done. And all I've got is this pretty simple um, outline left in this spot. So the rest of the process of working with this export is just sort of cleaning it up and moving things around. And so once again, if you don't remember where to get um, the structure for your parentheticals, your LibGuide will always have a parenthetical tab that you can check, but you can also look at your citation in your sources. And next to every source, the three dots, um, there's a selection that is in-text citation. So I'm going to click the three dots next to the source. Um, let me pick this second one. And I'm going to select in-text citation. And this particular one, because it had more than two authors, it uses an MLA abbreviation of et al. And let's say I know from my notes I used page 45. If I use this interactive box and I look, I can see exactly what my parenthetical citation should look like. And I can always copy and paste that into the correct place in my outline. And then I am basically ready to go to start writing my paper. I have almost everything in the right place. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about outlining, please email me, Ms. Timmons, or your teacher, and we'll try to help you. Thanks very much. Good luck.